See important safety information and full Leorosol intrathecal baclofen injection prescribing information at the end of the video. We have over 6 million stroke survivors in this country, and there are so many of them that I think the system is challenged with how to appropriately treat them. There are certain patients who hold tremendous potential in terms of their recovery, but if we're not giving them the opportunity and treating them with uh, what, what they need, particularly when it comes to spasticity, uh, if we're not giving them that option and, and treating it correctly, they're never gonna fulfill their potential. I have tremendous empathy for my primary care colleagues. They have so many things to deal with in a short amount of time. And the post-stroke patients specifically, they may be managing their blood pressure and their anticoagulants. By the time they get down the checklist, they don't even think about spasticity as a major problem. It interferes with patients' function, interferes with their rec recovery. Physicians want to do their best. They are being referred patients to help solve a challenging situation. In this case, what do we do with this patient who has severe spasticity? How can we help this individual who has severe spasticity that's pulling the fingers into the palm, pulling the elbow into the chest or the arm into the chest, whose shoulder cannot be moved because the spasticity pulls it in? The potential uh, pain that occurs. The physicians want to do their best job. They want to help this group of patients. And by having uh, the results of this study gives them an option to say, look, there is a clinical study that demonstrates this is an option that can help people with severe spasticity. And I believe the study uh, demonstrated that to be the case. This was the first study that looked at the use of intrathecal baclofen and compared it to conventional medical management, other and some, sometimes termed best medical therapy. So we took patients who were affected by a, a stroke, which resulted in severe spasticity. We randomized them into two groups, one that received conservative or conventional medical management, and another who had the opportunity to go through an intrathecal baclofen injection, which uh, was then looked at whether it results in a reduction of tone. If it did, then these individuals would move on to have an intrathecal baclofen pump implanted. And then over the course of six months, we looked at both groups, those individuals that had the intrathecal pump implanted and those that had con conservative or conventional medical management over that six months to evaluate the effectiveness of spasticity tone reduction and, and also looking at other variables as well. The primary endpoint, which we demonstrated statistically to be significant, was a reduction in lower extremity spasticity uh, by a reduction of the ASHWER scale, utilizing intrathecal baclofen compared to conventional medical management. And also we demonstrated statistical significance of a reduction in tone in the upper extremities as a reduction of ASHWER scale. And that is substantial because of the fact that we have now demonstrated that the use of this device, the intrathecal baclofen pump for the treatment of severe spasticity can help those individuals with upper and lower limb spasticity. As far as other outcomes, we did look at the functional independence measure, which showed a trend in improvement in regards to improvement in function for those individuals. One patient who comes to mind was a young individual, 37 years of age, who was affected by a stroke who had severe uh, spasticity involving the right arm and leg. And he was able to walk into the clinic with a cane, but difficulty with ambulation, poor balance, and very slow gait pattern. Uh, he also was a, unable to use the affected arm for any activities and it was drawn into his chest. The intrathecal baclofen pump was implanted and he was able to markedly improve his ambulatory ability, did not need a cane any further, and was able to use the arm for functional tasks of holding on to objects, being able to uh, go out in public in a way that he was very comfortable with. How about using the right arm? You had indicated to me that you really couldn't use the right arm for anything. How are you able to use the right arm now uh, compared to before we had the pump implanted? You know, um, okay, when I first came here, you know, I was stuck like this here. I think right. had to put a thing, a 
put the thing on my arm, they can hit the hear me right here, and then I'm not, I can move it, you know what I'm saying? You and I talk that even now you can at least use the arm yeah. to hold on to object or to yeah. steady something. And then while... like, okay, when I, I go to the store, right, I put something in his hand, right, I put something in his hand too. <laughs> I put a little lighter in his hand. Yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah. And I know you weren't able to do that. Yeah, I could do that, yeah. Physicians are trained in the, the, the medical model of, of, of science and looking at research studies and looking at data. And, and this study clearly demonstrates an improvement in a reduction of tone in individuals who have severe spasticity. So by being able to demonstrate to them that we took a clinical study that involved not just United States sites, but also sites throughout Europe, involved a lot of different clinicians, a lot of different treatment approaches that ultimately led to an implantable intrathecal baclofen pump for severe spasticity and resulted in a significant reduction of tone. And there are a lot of, a lot of implications that we have to take into consideration. Are they a surgical candidate? Do they have other medical comorbidities that may impact on the use of these devices? Compliance issues, family support. Do they really understand what they're getting into? Does the physician really understand what they're getting into when an implantable pump is placed? So there's a lot of challenges, but they can become they can they can be overcome, and and I think that's really what we have to look look at. What can we do to help our patients? What can we do to improve outcomes? Can we go a little bit a little bit further? Important safety information for ITB therapy with Liorisol intrathecal baclofen injection. Abrupt discontinuation of intrathecal baclofen, regardless of the cause, has resulted in sequelae that include high fever, altered mental status, exaggerated rebound spasticity, and muscle rigidity that in rare cases has advanced to rhabdomyolysis, multiple organ system failure, and death. Prevention of abrupt discontinuation of intrathecal baclofen requires careful attention to programming and monitoring of the infusion system, refill scheduling and procedures, and pump alarms. Patients and caregivers should be advised of the importance of keeping scheduled refill visits and should be educated on the early symptoms of baclofen withdrawal. Special attention should be given to patients at apparent risk, for example, spinal cord injuries at T6 or above, communication difficulties, history of withdrawal symptoms from oral or intrathecal baclofen. Consult the technical manual of the implantable infusion system for additional post-implant clinician and patient information. See warnings. ITB therapy, intrathecal baclofen therapy, or the Medtronic baclofen pump is a treatment that may relieve some of the symptoms of severe spasticity. People who have severe spasticity resulting from cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, stroke, brain injury, or spinal cord injury may be candidates for ITB therapy. When spasticity is due to spinal cord injury or multiple sclerosis, oral baclofen must not control spasticity adequately or have intolerable CNS side effects. ITB therapy may be considered one year after a traumatic brain injury. Safety and effectiveness have not been established for children younger than four. It is important that a patient keep scheduled refill visits to not run out of intrathecal baclofen. A patient must also understand the early symptoms of baclofen withdrawal, including increase or return in spasticity, itching, low blood pressure, lightheadedness, and tingling. A sudden stop of intrathecal baclofen therapy can result in serious baclofen withdrawal symptoms, including high fever, changed mental status, muscle rigidity, and in rare cases, multiple organ system failure and death. It is very important that a patient who experiences any of the above symptoms call a doctor right away. Seizures have been reported and can be associated with overdose, withdrawal, and maintenance therapy. Patients should first respond to a screening dose of intrathecal baclofen before consideration of long-term infusion via an implantable pump. 
A patient should not receive ITB therapy if the patient has an infection, is allergic to baclofen, has a body too small for an implantable pump, requires a pump implant deeper than 2.5 centimeters, or in the presence of spinal anomalies. Implanting the system has possible risks, including infection, spinal fluid leak, and headache. Pump or catheter problems can lead to pump stall or dosing programming errors may result in clinically significant overdose or underdose. Acute massive overdose may result in coma and may be life-threatening. An alarm will sound if there is a problem with the pump or if the pump needs to be replaced or filled with baclofen. Educate patients to always inform healthcare personnel of the implanted infusion system before any medical or diagnostic procedure, such as MRI or diathermy. These may cause patient injury, system damage, operational changes to the pump, and changes in flow rate. The most common drug-related side effects of ITB therapy include hypotonia, somnolence, headache, convulsion, dizziness, urinary retention, and paresthesia. Intrathecal baclofen may cause drowsiness. Use of intrathecal baclofen with other CNS depressants and alcohol may increase drowsiness. Titration is required to determine the best dose for treatment. Patients and all their caregivers must receive adequate information regarding the importance of keeping scheduled refill visits and should be educated on the early symptoms of baclofen withdrawal and overdose. A prescription is required. Not everyone responds to ITB therapy in the same way. Patients should always discuss the potential risks and benefits of the therapy with a the physician. Healthcare professionals must review the product technical manual and full prescribing information prior to use for detailed prescribing information. Please refer to the full prescribing information about Medtronic ITB therapy accompanying this video. You may also call Medtronic at 800-328-0810 or visit Medtronic's website at professional.medtronic.com/itbsafety.